it's always I'm always jumping with Jeff. Absolutely. Come on and address your audience. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. I, I, I can't wait to get into this topic because as you guys know in the in the thumbnail, Gangster Jesus. Some of you might be like, come on, that's a cheap shot. But wait, wait, wait we're, this is there's something to this thing. He is a boaster. He is not playing around. The Jesus you get in church is, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And, oh, the greatest thing you can do is to love. But that's that's part of his schizophrenic, if you will, message that flips on a dime. And he'll just randomly snap and then brag about going after Jezebel and throwing her on a table to rape her and then killing her children. What? <laughs> Oh my heavens. <laughs> oh my goodness. Friends, this is David Vos and it's a beautiful day. Beautiful sunshiny sky, warm weather. Hope you're having the time of your life and having a beautiful day. Friends, we've got to talk. Somebody sent me a video yesterday very good friend of mine and I must say I don't like watching these videos I don't get my information from other people's videos or their ideas and I don't read books and the reason why will become very apparent in this day's broadcast. But as I began to watch this, the guy on the right, he is, he calls himself Amun. Now, remember, I've only watched the video that I was sent and then this particular one that I want to show you some clips with. Because I chose this one to show you a couple of clips of it because it was a little bit more to the point and got to some of the nitty gritty that we need to talk about today as opposed to the other one that I watched last night. But he is an avowed Satanist, although he doesn't like to say it very often, but he does at times just come right out and he'll say, Heil, you know, S, you know, the guy. And he is boasting about the fact that, you know, he, he doesn't like Jesus. And it would take, well, most of you, you know, Christians probably wouldn't even watch his video. I don't think you'd get suckered into it just by looking at the first five minutes of his videos because he's like, hi, I'll say, you know. And so most of you probably wouldn't get sucked in by this. But the reason I'm doing a video on this sort of uh, countering some of the stuff that he's talking about will become apparent. He is a master deceiver that's right i have found the real person that may right now be used by satan more than anybody else i can think of derrick rose is being used in a very sad and alarming way i put a lot of effort into Explaining to you out there what you're seeing when you're seeing Derek. Some some of you are getting drawn into these. They're they're luring you into these ideas, and you're beginning to doubt the Bible, and you're beginning to doubt. Hold on, I gotta. The wind. The wind comes up just when I start doing a video. <laughs> okay, dokie. Okay, well, but I put a little effort into exposing Derek. And then we got into Joshua on the Sons of God Ministries. So I think a lot of you think, well, why are you, why do you care about what these other people are teaching? Well, they were infiltrating my channel and we're not going to go back through that. They were drawing many of you who have these wandering minds and curiosities and you haven't gotten a relationship yet with Jesus to know exactly what's going on. And you've been watching, a lot of you have been watching my videos. And you're like, yeah, I get that. And thank you, David, for 
for doing these subjects. But because I dug deep and found things that modern Christianity is not teaching correctly, diametrical opposites of what we believe and delving into these things, it's like lifting the veil. Well, then the devil's got to play in this game. He's got to jump in too because we're coming down to the last days and he's got to deceive people and he doesn't want anybody opening the veil and exposing any of this. So he has to come in and say, no, 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 no. Let me, let me raise up some hotheads who think they know everything. And I, and, and some who even I can lure into Satanism and, and, and be like literally as this man, Ammon Hillman, I don't believe his first name is actually Ammon. I think he's, he talks about, he's a necromancer and he's, he, he's channeling Amun. I don't think he really is. He admits that he's really just channeling a demon. And he, there was a prophecy that was made concerning him twice in a row when he first started his work that he would be channeling a troop of demons for Satan. And he's very proud of that. Now, why would any Christians or... I mean, this guy, this Gnostic warrior on the left, he used to be a Christian. And recently he's flipped over and I guess now he's full-scale Satanist now. Unless he doesn't know that the guy he's interviewing is a is a Satan worshiper, a necromancer. He's gone from Christianity and he's accepted this lie. I will show you a little clip right here where the Gnostic informant does, I guess it does a video with Myth Vision. His name is Derek, I think. Derek was a originally a, a very serious Christian and he's flipped over into the Satanism or whatever. If they're not, he might say, I'm not a Satanist. Well, they're, they're high-fiving and buddy-buddies with Satanists, agreeing with them. I do teach esoteric wisdom, astrology, and many things. But what we teach here is not from some book written by Talmudic Judeans or Bavarian Illuminati or liars or financed by the Rothschilds. Everything I'm teaching here is from the actual esoteric wisdom or the actual meaning of that exoteric wisdom. It's in the Bible that can only be understood with prayer and fasting. I didn't read any of these books. But give me a chance to show you why these guys are wrong, how they have become warriors for Satan, and why their twist on all of this, though it might make some sense to you. Like, for instance, I was teaching that Yahweh was the devil. And that got big. I mean, certainly there used to be Gnostics that believed this in the first century. People have talked about it. But in modern times on YouTube, my videos went viral with this information. I didn't get it from anybody else. But it was like a restoration of some ancient truths that we had forgotten. And it kind of went viral and others started listening to that. But because their heart was wrong, they liked it. They liked this information. I think they're being egged on by the devil in a lot of ways because their hearts aren't right. So the devil's in control of their minds and hearts. And he encourages them to listen to what I'm saying and then to use it and twist it. And, you know, because there's lots of people that are going to go, oh, so Yahweh's the devil. That's great, right? We don't understand it. We're not going to get to the bottom of what all this really means. These two covenants, the two deities that were under grace and love and Jesus is awesome. We're just going to go out there and tell people that don't know anything about this. Hey, Dave's saying it and the Gnostics taught it. And hey, we're going to repeat some things that Dave was saying. Not even understanding what all of this means and just saying, well, therefore, maybe even the divine being is the devil. And if we're under grace, and even when we were sinners, the Lord forgave us and gave us more grace, Paul says, then why don't we do more sin that more grace could come? This is what they were doing in Paul's day, and this is what they're doing now. Satan is swooping in to try and distort the gospel. But hey, there's this guy over here that says Jesus isn't even true. 
Or Joshua says he's not coming back. His kingdom will never be established. Or Santos says Jesus is Satan. It's the same person. Santos Bonacci. And all of these guys are going on each other's shows. So this guy, the Gnostic warrior, goes on to Derek's Myth Vision podcast and they're sharing ideas. And sometimes they're with Rex Bear, or sometimes they're with Santos Bonacci or Josh of the Sons of God Ministries or Derek Bros or whatever. And they're all high-fiving. There's Alina Gaynan and Karina Pataki and on and on and on. I mean, we've got these new fads like Flat Earth and, and Nibiru's coming. And people don't know what this 3,600-year Nibiru coming back means they they just run with stuff and and it's rumors and and lies and then it all comes around finally in the end that look nothing's true the deities are all demons and we can worship all of the demons huh but the main thing they they want to do is get you to a point where you don't believe in the bible that it's not inspired that jesus isn't really the christ He's just one of many Christs or he was just a man or he's not coming back to save us. Christianity wasn't really true. So I want to get into some of this. I want to counter or take a little bit of look at what this Ammon Hillman is saying because I think he might be the master sent by Satan, the devil, in these latter days. He had prophecies over him saying that Satan's going to be working through him. I think him and Alina Danan, who's supposed to be the emissary of Yahweh, or Inki, she says. She believes she's married to Thor, the deity, Thor, and the Federation Galactic whatever, and all this stuff. We've got to counter this. But this man is a so-called scholar. Now remember, guys, I'm not impressed with scholars. I think scholars are followers and they're following their bellies and their greed and their three musketeer attitude, all for one, one for all. We're just a big Masonic deception. And they're just out there lying and conniving. But this man, Amon Hillman, is a one of a kind. He may be the most clever seducing evil spirit talking through him that I've seen. One of the things that he's got is that he's got a vast knowledge. I've never seen anybody talking about some of the things that I've been talking about, where Christianity began, Gnosticism, and then the ancient Eleusinian mysteries, the Temple of Diana, Dionysius, and all these Greek I mean, he, he, he and I agree on so many things. He's done his homework. He knows a lot of things. He talks about the Septuagint being the only true Bible. There never was any Hebrew, just like I've been saying. I don't hear him talking a lot about Yahweh being the devil. I doubt whether he knows who I am. But I hope he knows who I am after this. This other guy, Gnostic Warrior, I think he's a fool. Because he doesn't know anything like Amun... Hillman, who may actually have been deceived. He's brilliant. He's working through this. I think in the beginning, he was trying to figure this out. And Satan Im sort of lured him in by giving him these prophets. Like, I, I feel like his, his heart was lured in by the idea that he could overturn all these Christians and their teachings. He got hurt feelings by the university that, where he was working and and something, he talks about this spirit that, that he uses as a muse that gives him inf information. And he talks to the dead. And he says that he got convinced by these demonic beings. And they showed him this information. The problem is, is he doesn't understand the information he's looking at. Now, he does point out a lot of information that almost no Christian even knows about. We've talked a lot about it on this show, but I present this information slowly because 
Christianity as it is today cannot understand or grasp that Elijah preached at the temple at Baal back and overthrew the, the teachings of Baal and then they built the temple of Dionysius on the spot. Now, they can't understand or they don't see that Dio is the, Dion is Dia or deity in that Greek word language and the N is just syntax. And Us, Isil on the N is Jesus or the Savior. So, this Dionysia changed the water into wine. This is the true mysteries. So once you understand that and you begin to see that the glossolalia where they were speaking in tongues and all the things that little allusions in the New Testament where Paul's talking about women having their heads shorn and stuff like this. Nobody has any clue or, or playing with serpents and they will not cause any harm if they bite you. And Paul's ability to not be affected by snake bites and different, different things he brings up. He brings up a lot about this naked boy in the book of Mark where Jesus is in this garden of Gethsemane and he's found with this naked boy and he goes into the actual deep meanings of these words in the Greek and says this is some kind of an ancient ritual, satanic pagan ritual that Jesus is doing. But then he turns around and says, yeah, but Jesus, I don't like Jesus. I'm going to go ahead and go straight for the devil, right? For Satan. I'm going to worship Satan. Jesus is just a pretender. But then on the other hand, he wants you to believe that Jesus did all the things that he believes in doing. Well, I want to try to untangle all of this. This man is dangerous because he knows a lot, but he doesn't understand it. As much as he knows, and I will tell you this, he understands it better than any Christian you'll ever find. That's why there will be no, as far as, I, I don't know of anyone that could debate him or expose what he's preaching. So I'm going to try to do this today. And I prayed to the Lord that he will give me his direction because this is very difficult for people if they do watch him. They could be lured into the Satanism because they begin to hear what he's saying is that Jesus was just a Satanist too. See, And this might confuse people because I've been explaining some of these deeper things and the Eleusinian mysteries and the Canaanites and how the Jews always married Canaanites and, you know... But those who've been watching my videos probably got enough of what I'm saying, just these little illusions that I'm throwing out there. You know that, yeah, some of the things I've been saying, which is true, it's all true, kind of upsetting the apple cart for nominal Christians in the way we used to think. Yes, there is reincarnation. Yes, I believe in all the scriptures, in the book of Thoth, and the Bhagavad Gita, and all the things we've talked about. And if you've just been watching my videos, you've been like, oh, okay, this is great. Universal religion, astrology, great. I like it, Dave. But then he comes in and he goes, now, let me tell you what they were really doing. And he starts giving the details that I have not completely made known to you in the past because I knew you probably wouldn't be able to grasp it. We have done videos, a lot, a whole bunch of videos on the Vestal Virgins and the rituals and the Eleusinian mysteries. But, I never told you, I, I told you that the sacrament was a psychoactive drink and food. That it had to do with herbs and mixed strong drinks, sacraments, where you would be taken out of the body as Paul was at the end of three years. He went through his initiation and whether in the body or out of the body, he could not say, but he saw the third heaven or paradise. And we've explained some of these but what we didn't do we stopped short of fully spelling it out what these rituals were that some of these ancient temples were doing maybe even sexual rituals and we talked about the gymnasium where they got all stripped down naked we talked about the Ariel's gamels but we left it at that. We, we, don't, we didn't go real deep because if we started talking about some of the actual things that these people did, 
we then have to go in deeper and understand why they were doing these things and whether or not Jesus approved of this. Let me just point out right away, Jesus didn't approve of this and he's misunderstanding some of these texts that he's giving you. So we've got to, we've got to cover this. But one thing we know for sure, the apostles said, these are three things he wants you to continue to do. We're not under any law, but we don't want you to, to follow fornication, which is that word porneia. And he rightly understands this Amun Hillman, that this word porneia has the connotation of a slave prostitute. They were slaves and they were religious prostitutes. And it doesn't mean any immoral sex, as all Christians seem to want to make it mean. When the Bible says don't commit fornication, most of the Christians, all of them, want you to believe that means you can't have sex with another same sex, or you can't commit adultery, or you shouldn't have premarital sex, or it, it, it's about masturbation, or whatever kind of sex that they don't like. It's just all lumped together in a big thing. It's called fornication. Where we get pornography, porno. But it doesn't mean pictures because we also have the word graphy at the word of that. Porno, pornography. So that's something that has come down to us in a, in a wrong light. It's not just pictures of sex, but pictures and rituals and ceremonies that are being done to little children against their will or they're being used in some sort of evil satanic ritual. So in Acts chapter 15, when the apostles come together in the assembly and in the Sanhedrin, the 70, came together and the elders, which is what the Sanhedrin is, Jesus chose 72 and the 12. That was the elders and the apostles that came together. And there was a question, should we keep the law? You know, are we Christians now? What does that mean? Do we still keep the law of Moses? And they said, no. But they said, our decision is that we're not under any law. However, we want you to continue to abstain from fornication. Well, that's a pretty big deal. If this Amun Hillman is correct, that Christianity is just some, that Gnost, early Gnosticism is all just a bunch of rituals and sexual perversions and 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 terrible wicked things and Jesus was in the garden with a young man who didn't have any clothes on and la di da di da it all makes sense right except for wait a minute so the apostles of Jesus his own apostles that he chose decided to say no no don't do what Jesus does right Jesus is talking about the eunuchs you've got to become a eunuch for the kingdom and if you're going to interpret that these all these mysteries as having to do with some illicit evil kind of men lying with men and uh, raping young children and pedophilia and drinking their blood, which is what he does with, without any proof. Yes, he does talk about certain cults that he proves may have done some of these things. But we've talked about that in the past, and that's because all religion on the face of the earth had become apostate. Even John the Baptist, who was the leader of all of this thing we call the mystery schools. And, and mystery schools would start up here and there, but they were illegitimate. The Magi was a huge, not just some cult, but it was the world seat at that time of this other priesthood. It's not like there's millions of religions. There's Judaism, which is the lower two tribes, and the ten tribes worshipped at Bethel, were scattered into all the world. That was the rest of the religions. The different tribes had different prophets that went to them to gather them, and they all had their prophets that taught them these mysteries. And so it went to the world as Buddhism and Shintoism and Zoroastrianism and 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 all of these branches of the same truths that go back to the original truths written in hieroglyphs in the Great Pyramid. 
and I'm aware that some of you are new to this program and, and you don't know what I'm talking about, but let's stick on to the subject here. This man, who was a scholar and has spent years studying these texts and translating the Greek, he has a lot of knowledge, but he got into some kind of satanic influence and they're luring him into false conclusions about it. Just because he read about some of this stuff that I talk about doesn't mean he's got the right interpretation. His own conclusions and and words on what he's learned prove that he's confused. Because on one hand, he likes everything that these ancient pagan religions do. He's a Satanist. That's what he thinks that is. He's wrong there. The Eleusinian mysteries and all this is not Satanism. Okay, the, the worship of the father and the mother and the holy son is not Satanism. The truth is, is there probably wasn't any religion in the world up to that point that was Satanism. That's a modern thing. And it's a diabolical twisting of all the ancient truths to deceive the, the youth today, which is what he's doing. He's being sucked into it. Like Anton LaVey. That was not just some accident. He was Leve or a Levite. And these individuals are all out there. This one family is the one that seems to be starting all of these abnormal twists and confusions. Like Sitchin, who's trying to confuse you about the Sumerian tablets. They're all the same family. All these Bavarians. You know? But now that we've dug up these tablets and this has been exposed, these ancient truths, in order that this great truth doesn't fully get out and people begin to understand the real esoteric meaning, they have to get cults and use mesmerism and get the youth into making videos and channels distorting all this information. And this man right here, as brilliant as he is, he may be Satan's right-hand man as the prophecy has spoken. A prophecy from the devil. Because he spent years in academia and found this deep things of Satan and figured out how to twist them. And now he's luring in people like this guy, Gnostic warrior, who's just recently come out of Christianity, he's getting all confused about these guys and all this stuff and doesn't understand any of it. And now here comes their savior who explains it all to them. Yeah, some of the stuff that Dave is saying is, is true, but let me give you the real details. It's all Satanism. Oh, what? Yeah, there's no difference. Jesus is Satan and Satan is Jesus, according to Santos Bonacci. Those are the real mysteries. Don't worry about it. Jesus isn't coming. There is no Jesus. That's the real truth. Yeah. Even though this man, Amon Hillman, knows that very amazing thing. I don't even, I'm surprised he's, he's admitting some of the things that I've been telling you. That there is no Hebrew, ancient Hebrew Bible. It's the Septuagint is the Holy Bible. The ones that Jesus and the apostles quoted from. And yes, the Eleusinian mysteries and the Galatia. He didn't even talk about the Galatia of the speaking in tongues and it, very little. You know, he does talk about the women that would go into these dances and sing and 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 their words, whatever they came out of their mouth, they were like an oracle and they would write it down. I've talked about all of this and the Vestal Virgins and what all this meant. It was good, but it was not the absolute truth because no religion or man-made teachings on the earth is ever always good. That's why the Lord would send prophets from time to time to wake them up. They would get into apostasy. The Apostle Paul says that they turn the glory of the divine being into a four-footed beast and they're worshiping animals and idolatry and turning the proper use of a man into that which is against nature and men sleeping with men and all these things that, that Satan would use to pull and distort and destroy. So, don't be duped by these imposters who think they know things 
because they're channeling Satan or because they spent years reading books written by Bavarian Illuminati who worship the devil. No matter where you're going, these guys always misrepresent everything. Trying to make it look like Christianity is the bad guy. But the people that did all the bad things wasn't Christianity. They're the devil worshipers who call themselves Christians. That's why the Pope's down there, you know, diddling the little children and the pedophilia and all this stuff. This wasn't from Christ. What kind of blasphemy? Oh, well, there's a scripture that says that Jesus was with a young man. He was naked. There you go. Okay, but the apostles of Jesus say that anybody who commits fornication, which is what you're promoting, taking young, underage girls, little virgins, and doing very bad things to them, or little boys, yes, there were the Vestal Virgins. Yes, there was these ancient priesthoods. But they didn't do this evil. They didn't fall into this idolatry and begin to see these ceremonies as something we needed to do to get salvation. Just like the Judeans. They had the whole law, the Torah. And they took it literally. And they said, oh, you are got to take a lamb and, and sacrifice it. Yahweh wants sacrifice, but they didn't understand it was a parable. It's this world that wants the sacrifice. Jesus came to do away with Satan and the adversary and the law because the Judeans had fallen into idolatry and they worshiped Molech, like it says in Acts chapter 7. But the other tribe, the 10 tribes, had gone into all the worlds and they also were apostate. That's why Paul says they began to worship the divine being as, as four-footed beasts and men lying with men and fornication, which is the changing these vestal virgins, which our mother Mary was a vestal virgin. Remember we said the, the, the Magi was a, a real ancient priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood. They tried to keep it pure, but there were little groups. They were becoming apostate, just like the Judeans. That Sanhedrin had fallen and they began to condemn their brethren. And so the 10 tribes, wherever they went, they also fell into idolatry. And they saw the sacrament. And instead of using it as a way to see and leave their bodies as the Apostle Paul and go into the heavenly realms and have visions and dreams and truth and knowing the love of Christ, they used it to get gain, to manipulate little children, their Ariel's Gamos, they perverted it into some demonic orgies. That's the word that they, in the book of Revelation, translate the wrath. We're not appointed to the wrath or the last purge of evil that's going to sweep this world, that's going to be a test to all the world, that he will keep us from the hour of test and the 10 days of trial that's coming upon the entire inhabited earth. And it's here now. And these men are the false prophets being raised up to deceive you. Yes, the apostles said we're not to have anything to do with fornication, meaning these this perverted pedophilia and men sleeping with men and priesthoods that are doing these orgies. We're not a point into that because that orgy is going to be a release, a revelation, apocalypse of the man of sin, of that evil nature because they were deceived and they would not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. The Lord allows the delusion, the strong delusion to come unto them. He knows it's coming. He knows that they will take the Torah and take it literally because they could not see the light or understand or grasp. They didn't have the ears to hear the true meaning that Jesus was teaching his disciples. There was a revelation given to Moses, but they rejected it. They refused to receive the true deity on Mount Horeb, the light, the covenant, the word, the holy pronouncement from the divine being, from light, Horeb, orb. But they didn't listen and they got this gold written in the fire and it came out Molech and they wanted to 
have a priesthood. They said, you go talk to the Lord and we don't want to, it's too bright, you know, put a veil over your face. Let's have a bunch of commandments and we'll have interpreters and you see, not the direct relationship through the veil in the presence of the Lord. They rejected the gospel and the Torah as it is, is just a veil, the letter of the law, the literal. It was the myth, but they didn't understand the myth. It was the story, but they didn't understand the meaning. And so they're seduced. They're lied to because they look at the material, the outward, and don't understand that it's not about the material. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And the same with the other religions of the world. They were doing these rituals that prophesied and portrayed grander things like the universe being the virgin, right? And it was played out by our mother Mary, who was incarnated and gave birth to Jesus, the firstborn among many brethren. There are real meanings to all of this. And it's all about Jesus. It's about that inner Christ in all of us, who is love. And they don't understand that. So they say, all oh, these rituals, they were doing them. No, they weren't diddling pedophiles. Jesus wasn't doing that. The apostles weren't doing anything like that. And because a lot of people want to believe in this stuff, when they hear somebody like Ammon Hillman tell them, yeah, we found that there were these temples and we really found this one guy who said that in the temple, they had sex with little children. And that's what this all means. Well, I guarantee that's not what they were doing in Persia at the great temple where the Zoroastrian priesthood taken over by Daniel, the head of the Magi, I guarantee you that's not what they were doing. If they were doing rituals of any kind, they were wholesome and they were types and shadows of Christ and the enlightenment of mankind and love. Now, if there were others who saw these rituals and thought they should be taken literally and began to twist them and turn them into some kind of perverted thing, like, oh, we'll, we'll make an image of the cherubim in heaven, right? Which, looked at properly, could be something to help you learn. But if you begin to worship the image, it's idolatry. You build a temple as a type or a shadow of the temple of your body. And there are layers to this. The whole tent or temple is all of creation. And so the true temple is not made with hands. And this is just a type and a shadow. We don't worship material things. So if they had a priesthood about the Ariel's Gamos that had to do with some divine birth of Christ and the and the, the wedding that was being represented there at Cana, it was a heavenly mystery. And they misunderstood it and, and started going into these buildings that they thought were temples and making disgusting, perverted sexual acts out of it. Then... It's the same as what the Judeans were doing. They missed the mark. They fell into idolatry because they couldn't grasp the spiritual content behind these things. No, it is not true that the Greeks believed in demonic frenzies and, and sexual orgies. There were those who did that and may have been, in a sense, portraying what the Antichrist is about to do when he comes at this last hour and, and, and this great deception sweeps the world, that may be what, what they did. There may be rituals and things that people were doing that personified and, and, and symbolized that, just as in the Torah. Much of that stuff that they did in the Torah where they had the two goats at atonement, day 
and the one goat represented Jesus and all the sins of the world was upon his head. And then the scapegoat represents the Antichrist that all the sins of the world is going to go on his head and he's going to go into the wilderness. But does that then mean, because we don't understand it, that we should now worship goats? Or does it mean that we should all go make sacrifice of goats or build temples now? No. And does it mean that this one goat being the devil who's sent into the world to take all of our sins because he deserves it, that we should now say, oh, okay, so I guess it's a good thing that somebody comes along and be evil and embody evil and, and that'll help all men. No. The Lord didn't show us these types so that we could follow all of this in a literal sense and believe this was our salvation, worshiping or sacrificing the devil and embodying evil in him and, and everybody following after this goat or something like this. It's not what it means. You could misinterpret all of this if you wanted to. The drama that was being shown there, not the reality, the drama, the theater, was that there is in us these two natures, the fleshly and the spiritual, and they've been fighting, the two brothers. We're not to take from that that we could be like either one. Hey, they had a, a bad guy in the play, so therefore let's be the bad guy, Right? Maybe they did some washings. Maybe some of these ceremonies they had to unrobe and get down into the water and get themselves clean. It represented purity. And maybe because of the sexual organs being so important that there were certain blessings before marriage and things that we don't understand today. But for this man to come along and say, look, I've, I've done all this research and study and Pythagoras was a genius and he said that A equals B and B equals C, therefore C equals A. And that's how simple it is. We dug up some evil ritual of pedophilia and it resembles things that we see in the Bible, the virgins that followed Jesus and stuff. Therefore, whatever Jesus was doing, it was some kind of evil perversion, just like these other perverted idiots. Well, then why did the apostles say, don't get involved in this fornication, this child pedophilia slavery rituals and perversions? Why did the apostle Paul say, apostle Paul say, don't get involved in this? Do you think they really were involved in this? You're a liar. As much as I do believe that you, Ammon Hillman, are brilliant. Just as I said, Joshua was brilliant. Nevertheless, you're wrong. You're not brilliant enough to realize that you're being lured in by satanic demons. Luring you into this concept that all this evil is good, but Jesus did it, but I don't like Jesus. Well, it, it, this is ridiculous. You believe in all these rituals and satanic stuff, and you think Jesus did all this. But you don't like Jesus, you'd rather go with Satan. That's idiocracy, not theocracy. That's asinine. You are being blinded by Satan, sir, and you're leading people down the pit. And I know you laugh because there's no pit, there's no consequences to our actions. We can do whatever we want. I'll show you a clip here where these guys sound off. Look at this, what they say. This is the thug life of the Bible. When I started dipping into the drugs and the antiquity and the prostitution and the, these cult rites and stuff, yeah, you see a lot of thuggery. Yeah, so this is a great topic. Um, let's bring it all out, all out. Good. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's go to that first, uh, that first email that Peter kills Ananias, right? Yeah. Right. So um, uh, there was a certain guy, you know, um, named Ananias, and his his wife was Sapphira, right? Anyway, he sold some land, some of his own goods. He sold, right? This is usually a like a building upon a piece of land or something, right? He's got some so, some cash there going, and he like everybody else, he sells it, right? And he only gave a part. He only gave a part of it. To Peter right and so Peter says hey um what are you filled with Satan you know 
that you got this thing in your heart that you lying to the spirit of God that you, you kept some of this stuff back from. And um, yeah, and that's where it gets weird because uh, he falls down right away. He falls down and dies. Wow. Yeah, I'm hearing this. Ex epsuxin. Ex epsuxin. And it uses a weird word there. Uh, it uses a very weird word there, Neil, for um, to die. It's used by the doctors on the side of, of the medical text for losing a heart rate, a stable heart rate. Okay. So, yeah, thug life. Yeah, the, Jesus is a thug, right? And here we're going to prove it now. Uh, the early church had all things common. That's certainly thug life, right? They wanted to get out of the world and share everything. Boy, they're pretty big thuggies, aren't they? And this guy comes in with evil heart. Now, Peter didn't say he could read his heart. Peter said that the Holy Spirit could read his heart. And the Holy Spirit had told Peter that he was deceiving everyone. You see, we have stories like this for a reason. Our Heavenly Father wants us, through his apostles, to hear the gospel. And he wants us to know that we have to love one another. And that if we let any evil creep up into our heart, it will destroy the whole lump. Like leaven will destroy the whole lump. And it'll all get raised but we've got to be unleavened. We've got to not have that leaven of the Pharisees in us. Not one little part, because one little spore can grow into this whole wall of fungus if we don't keep out these spores, these germs that can lead to our getting sick and dying. And since this is the kingdom of the Lord, he's the king, and... He wants to love you and he wants you to receive him because he loves you instead of being conquered by Satan, by the flesh and the deceptive world. He's the truth and he stands there and knocks. You got to open. He's not going to force anybody, but he happens to be the truth. He's talking. This is a parable about light, right? If you snuff out the flame you got no light now you're going to bump into the wall these are just facts these are parables so in the old testament it talks about parables like this where when they were conquering the promised land there was a town where the lord said i don't want you to take anything from this town just destroy it but they had all this gold and there were money and there were young virgins they could have or they could just you know they could go in and, and just take all the goods and plunder the city. But that wasn't the purpose of taking out the city. To get all the gold. So the Lord said, be careful. Don't take one thing from this city. Burn it all. And it was supposed to be a type or a shadow of a reality of truth. We all had to understand that the kingdom of this world. The darkness that we live in. We can't harbor any of it. We got to get rid of it. Because it will destroy the kingdom of the Lord, the truth. A little bit of lies will destroy the kingdom of truth. That's what this is talking about. And this egotistical idiot, both of these guys are so stupid that they don't understand this. And they're going to stand up here and, and, and pontificate on the lies of Satan and take your children down to hell with them. Because they don't understand. Oh, woe unto them because they have made themselves prophets and teachers and they're false teachers and false prophets. So Peter was not a thug and neither was Jesus. He was bringing to the world his kingdom, having all things common, loving and sharing and everybody having enough and nobody having too much and nobody having too little. And they were all happy and filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were given instructions, don't harbor any of this world and materialism. It wasn't Peter who was saying, I'm the thug and you're dying because I don't like you. This was being done by the Holy Spirit, not by Peter. And the Holy Spirit, my friend, Mr. Hillman, if you don't understand that the Holy Spirit of love is not into rituals of pedophilia and evil, then you are sick 
little man and you're leading people astray. And I'm going to expose this today. So let's continue on with his ridiculous logic. This message went out, man. People stood in fear. People were afraid because of this. Uh, uh, yeah, and then he brings in his wife. Same thing happens to his wife. She hits the ground, He sit, and he tells her. He's so good. He can tell her. He says, we just took your husband out and buried him, just like we're going to bury you. And boom, she hits the ground. And boom, she hits the ground. Oh, he's such a mocker. He's so foolish to gleefully declare to the world how evil Jesus and his apostles were for wanting to keep the community safe from greedy materialists who did not want to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit and everybody sharing the world. You see, that's why we're having these problems here in America. We've got these oligarchs, these billionaires ruling over us, and we're allowing it. It's evil that we have adopted this some kind of democracy, which means that three of us can murder and pillage the other two because we're the majority. That's evil. I want to follow the Holy Spirit, which is truth. I want to wake up and realize in wisdom that we can't tolerate these lion materialists in the kingdom of the Christ. He has tolerated it for thousands of years, waiting until the end of the world, till the harvest. Why? Jesus said, because I love you. I, I can't come and and get rid of the tares right now. Because you're all tares. You've got to learn and grow. And so Peter says, he's not slow respecting his promise, but he's patient with you. Because he desires all of us to attain into repentance. But these fools don't understand the scripture. Now, listen to what this guy, that wicked, evil lies that he begins to spin here. Like, what happened to that? The idea that you can't have any private property that's gone now those aren't the christians today this is a yeah. whole different a whole different world okay back then. now imagine how many people are listening to these guys pick the bible apart and they're like well yeah that makes sense well we can't have private property why well, he's not a democrat next he's probably going to say oh we should be like modern Democrats that have these welfare systems that helps people. Why Jesus wouldn't help people, right? He he. We should we should have taxes and 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 build big cities and have all of this wealth and everybody owns property. What, friends? This is very important right here. This is very important that you understand this. If this man Amon Hillman and this Gnostic warrior guy, if they don't understand this, and you can, I hope you Christians can see where they're wrong here, that we're not going to be in the eternal kingdom of democracy during the millennium. We're going to be under the king, Christ Jesus, who is the, the elder brother who, who came here to die for us because he loved us to deliver us from Satan. These guys want you to go back under the kingdom of Satan. They think Satan's more fair. Jesus just isn't fair. Why, he won't let you have property. Probably wouldn't even let you drive cars and pollute the earth. Like, But on the other hand, they'll turn around and say, oh yeah, but we've got to be globalists and we've got to you know, take away your, your property for the good of everyone else because Mother Earth is, is warming and, and, and you know, these are going to be the first people... And, and I've even heard this Gnostic warrior guy talk about politics like that. Like, he believes in, in the welfare state and, and liberalism like this and stuff. And he's changed a lot from what he used to believe. But I guarantee that any human government that you demand, because this Ananias and Sapphira, is because they wanted to keep their own property, and we should let them do that. 
Well, they were allowed to do that. So long as the devil's kingdom's here, people can do whatever they want. The Lord's not forcing this. This was a community where those who were in the community were going to practice love. And you were brought into the community because you said, yes, I love and I want to share my things and I want to live this life of love. And if we could get people to willingly do this, this would be great. We can get out of the world, be no part of it. That's what Jesus taught. But this one guy infiltrated this beautiful system, but he wanted to bring in some of this evil materialism into this beautiful kingdom of the Lord. He wanted to bring some hate and some lies into the body of Christ. And Jesus knows that when he establishes his kingdom on earth, it will be when everyone has come to the point that the good news of the kingdom has been preached to every creature on earth and everybody has had a testimony and they made their choices and they rejected the love of the truth that they might be saved and they've chosen instead Satan's world. And that's what this Mr. Gnostic warrior guy is doing and he's being led right into a land of hell by Amon Hillman. And I want you guys to understand how evil this is and if they can't get this part of the Bible right, then why do you think that they're getting this other part right where they're claiming that the, the Lord Jesus was a, a pedophile and was involved in sexual rituals and, and, and perversions? Why would you believe this man after he just really botched the whole concept of living in the kingdom of the Lord with love and sharing with one another and and in prayer, all in one accord. If he can't get that right, I guarantee he's not going to get anything else right. Now, let me show you. Uh, we're, we're getting, we're, we don't have much time left. So I'm just going to go right to the chase and show you the arrogancy of these human beings. And I'm very, very sad for this Gnostic warrior because I know he used to be a Christian and he's being duped by these evil Satanists. Now, listen. To their arrogance and everyone is a servant to this one emperor that's why all of a sudden when you get this christian byzantine empire it's it's really just like private all of it's privately owned by the caesar by by the emperor by the constantine or whoever like you know all these different constantine the six are these guys for real could they be maybe they bumped their head when they were born and and, and they, they don't got the cognitive ability to see what they're saying first of all he's not even talking about the teachings of jesus and the apostles he's talking about hundreds of years later with constantine and this uh nordic gothic group of individuals that take over the church and create the holy roman empire and have inquisitions and own property and doing all this evil this is not what jesus taught so he's contradicting himself. First, he's saying that the early church wanted everybody to have everything in common and, and everybody had plenty and they shared it. And he didn't like that. But then these darn Christians had private property. He just was saying that we ought to be allowed to have private property. But guess what happens when you get private property in the hands of somebody? He buys up all the property and then you don't get any property. That's why you've got to love one another and share it. But this guy is schizophrenic. And if you can't figure out that little simple thing, then why should we believe you that Jesus was a pedophile and he's not coming and he's not the Lord? Friend, I'm not going to believe in you. And I really hope you repent before too much longer because, friend, Jesus Christ is coming back to judge the world. And... He loves you so much. He's going to give you every opportunity to wake up. But please don't teach the little children to do this evil. This thug you call Jesus said that if you cause any of these little ones to stray from the truth, from the love of his arms, that it'd be better if you'd have tied a millstone around your neck and was thrown into the sea. It'd be better for you because... There's going to be a consequence, a judgment that's coming. And when you're leading these little children away from the kingdom of Christ into the satanic, you're 
openly worshiping Satan. This is what Amon Hillman believes. He's a Satanist. Boy, friend, I would hate to be in your shoes. I don't want I wouldn't want to have to go through the consequences of what you're doing. Because the universe, there is karma. In your arrogance, you're you think you know something, and you're leading these children astray. Friends, please be warned. Tell everybody you know not to follow this insanity. And if they get caught up in this, send them this video or something. Maybe this will wake them up. Now look how arrogant they continue on here. I thought about this. And then even if Christian turned out to be true, which it's not, but let's just, let's play along with this. Even if this, this scenario actually comes about, I'm going, I'm saying, send me in that lake of fire. I don't, this, this unit, this, this reality that you created, you're evil. I'm not going to spend eternity at your feet, worshiping you for this. Yeah. Kill me now. End yeah. it. I'm done. I opt out of this game because yeah. this is just. And it's like you created me this way, so I don't know what your deal is. You're the one that needs. This is this is a you problem. Get rid of me. I'm done. I don't care. I don't, we like, got to, like that to me is just evil. I'm hoping. I'm hoping Neil that it's real as it can be, so I can stand right in front of him. And when it comes my moment of judgment, krima. And they talk about the great white throne and his judgment. I'm looking forward to standing right there I honestly in front, feel the same in way front of the great me. white throne and saying, you were arrested with a naked boy. <laughs> I'm not following you. You would say that. You would say that. <laughs> I wish oh, my friends. This is enough right here. Their arrogance spitting in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ who loved them so much. He came to this world to tell them about the love of his father and give them the Holy Spirit, which is his grace and his truth. And these guys say, how dare you force me to, to worship truth? How dare you demand that I can't own my own world and have my own stuff? And covet my things. And 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 I don't want to be a part of your kingdom. You're the evil one. I hate you, Jesus, and all your love. Let me find some event in your scriptures that might be a little hard to understand. And I'll pervert it and go around telling everybody that that you're a pervert. And, a, and, and this, this guy, Amon Hillman, says that Jesus Christ was raping a child in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's blasphemous. And it's the most evil, wicked thing I've ever heard from any human being that's ever lived. I also heard Jeffrey Daughtry talking about this. They don't have any proof whatsoever. Just like that little word that we heard a little bit ago where it says that Ananias held back a, a portion of the price and didn't give everything he didn't have to join, but it says he fell down dead in our scriptures. But he points out that the word there is a medical term that his heart stopped. Okay. So does that mean that this is some kind of pharmaceutical ritual that Peter put something in his drink and made his heart stop? You fool. <laughs> you really believe that the apostle Peter put something in this man's drink? No, it was the Holy Spirit. And it was a parable written in your New Testament to show you that when Christ's kingdom comes, only love will be allowed in there. No more of this greed, nor this private property that you talk about, and this democracy. I think you guys see how dangerous these people are. Just like all the others that we've been going over and trying to expose that they think somehow or another that they're smarter than the apostles or that they've discovered some mysterious plot in the scriptures that really proves that Jesus was the devil and the devil was Jesus and therefore they're going to worship the devil and they don't like Jesus. What? Bunch of fools. And I hope you aren't lured by this foolishness. Friends, please get 
this video out to anyone who has gotten caught up into this mess. And the main thing is just pray and trust in only the one divine mind of love and goodness that the Apostle Paul tells us is in all and through all and above all. And that Jesus tells us we are in him and he loves us. And all we have to do is receive his love and his grace. But you're going to have to get on your knees and pray humbly. Not be so arrogant, Mr. Hillman. To think that because you went to college and studied in university, now you know that Jesus is a bad guy. When you don't see the ridiculousness and the blasphemous, ignorant teachings and how in your arrogance you're leading all these children down to hell and you don't even have any fear. You laugh and spit in the face of the Lord. I am fearful for you, my brother. I hope and pray that you will awaken from this ignorant behavior and thought process and receive the love of the truth so that you can also be saved from this wrath that is coming. And all you got to do is be no part of the world and share with one another. Get into the wilderness. Get out of the world and love one another like Jesus told us to do even when you see the day drawing near even the, all the more join me Ammon Hillman in preaching the good news of the kingdom to all the earth because this means eternal life taking in knowledge of you the only true divine being which is love and the one whom you sent forth to tell us about you, your son, your only begotten, who died on that cross for us, our elder brother Jesus, the firstborn among many brethren. Let us stand with him, not Satan. Don't be so foolish. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to leave it here, friends. The Lord loves you. Get on your knees and seek him. He'll reveal everything that you need to know. Just if you're humble and you truly seek him, you will find him. I'm going to go ahead and go. Lord will bless you. Have a good one.